Welcome to an example on how to approximate the area under a curve using rectangles. We're asked to approximate the area under the curve graph below from x equals 1 to x equals 6 using a right endpoint approximation with five subdivisions or five subintervals. So because we're using rectangles to approximate the area, we can see that the area is going to be approximately equal to the sum of f of c sub i times delta x where f of c would be the height of each rectangle and delta x would be the width of each rectangle. Let's begin by determining delta x, which is equal to b minus a divided by n, where for this example, because we're looking for the area from x equals one to x equals six, a equals one, b equals six, and because we're using five subdivisions, n equals five, which means delta x, is equal to 6 minus 1 divided by 5, which is equal to 1. So we're going to have five subdivisions, each with a width of one unit. And let's go ahead and show these subintervals on the graph. Again, we're concerned about the graph from x equals 1 to x equals 6, which is here. And now we'll form the subintervals with the width of 1. So we have our first subinterval here second subinterval here, third subinterval here, and then finally we have our fourth and fifth subintervals here. Next we'll form the rectangles which we'll use to approximate the area. And notice for this example, we're using right endpoint approximations, which means we'll use the right side of each subinterval to determine the height of each rectangle. So looking at the first subinterval from one to two, we're going to use the function value at x equals two for the height, and therefore this would be the height of the first rectangle. Again, because this is the function value on the right side of this first subinterval. Looking at the next subinterval, notice how x equals three is on the right side of the subinterval, so we'll use the function value at x equals three, which is here, for the height of the second rectangle. For the next subinterval, we'll use the height of x equals four, which would be here. So this is the third rectangle. For the next subinterval, we'll use the function value at x equals five, which is here for the height of the rectangle. And then finally, for the last subinterval, we'll use the function value at x equals six, which would be here for the height of this last rectangle. So we can say the area is approximately equal to the area of these five rectangles, let's first indicate the area using function notation, and then because we're not given the equation for the function, we'll have to use the graph to approximate the function values. So the area of the first rectangle is going to be, again, the height times the width. Well, the height is f of two, so f of two, the width is delta x, which we know is always one, so f of two times one gives us the area of the first rectangle plus the second rectangle, notice how the height would be f of 3. So we have f of 3 times a width of 1, plus next rectangle has a height of f of 4. So the area would be f of 4 times 1, plus for the fourth rectangle, again using the right side, the height would be f of 5. So f of 5 times 1 for the area. And then following for the fifth rectangle, the height would be f of 6, and therefore the area is f of 6 times one. And now we'll approximate these function values using the graph. So notice for f of two, we'll say the function value is approximately 2.1. So the area is 2.1 times one. Plus for the next area, we'd have f of three, which looks like it's about 2.6. So we'd have an area of 2.6 times one plus f of four times one, f of four, is equal to three, so the area would be three times one, plus the next rectangle would have a height of f of five, which looks like it's approximately 3.3, .3. so we'd have an area of 3.3 .3 times one, plus for our last rectangle, the height is f of six, f of six looks like it's approximately 3.7, so the area is 3.7 times one. Of course, we could leave off multiplying by one, but delta x is not always one, so I'm leaving it in for consistency. And now we'll go ahead and just find the sum of these products. So we have 2.1 plus 2.6 plus 3 plus 3.3 .3 plus 
plus 3.7. So the area approximation using the right endpoints is approximately 14.7 square units. Let's go ahead and shade the area of the five rectangles. Notice how the area of each rectangle is more than the area under the curve in each subinterval, and therefore this is often called the upper sum approximation. It is important to recognize that it's not the upper sum just because we're using the right endpoints. If this function was decreasing over the interval, the right endpoints would actually give us the lower sum. But it is true if the function is increasing over an entire interval, then the right endpoints would be the upper sum. We can also say that we have five circumscribed rectangles. If the rectangles were underneath the function, we could say that we had five inscribed rectangles. I hope you found this helpful.